So assessment in technologies education involves a number of particular approaches. You have two fundamental assessment types, the portfolio of learning and the log of learning activities. Now your portfolio of learning comprises a body of evidence that demonstrates your understanding of various concepts that you've learned during the course. And it fundamentally involves you developing four challenges and one lesson plan, um, specifically on digital technologies. Now, each of those is worth 10% each and combined, they make up 50% of your course grade. The other assessment is what's called a log of learning activities. Now, this is a particular form of assessment that um, records your participation and activity in completing various elements as you progress through the course. Now, it is broken into two activities again. One is you receive some marks for doing the tutorial activities. So generally each tutorial, there'll be two activities and each will contribute half a percent um, and combined across the 12 tutorials that will equate to 12% um, of your marks. Uh, and then there's also four quizzes. Now the quizzes can be, well, I'll explain those in more detail in a sec, um, but there are four of these, two of them are worth 9% and two of them are worth 10%. And combined with the tutorial activities, they count for 50% of your marks. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. So the tutorial activities, these provide evidence of you having completed the activities and they have to be done within a time frame. Essentially, you have until the next tutorial to complete your tutorial activities. I'll give a little bit of leeway. You'll have to check the exact due date. Um, I think I have them due on the Fridays. Um, but they have to be completed. If you fail to complete them by that time, you don't get the mark. That is the entire point of the assessment type. You're not assessed by criteria. It's just whether or not you get them done by that due time. So they can't be then submitted at the end of the course. Um, you don't have to provide an assessment uh, cover sheet and they do need to be your own work. Um, we do check for plagiarism. Um, you can't just go and find something off the internet or find one of your friend's submissions and submit those. Um, that will come under the definition of plagiarism and incur the, the wrath of the university in terms of academic misconduct. Um, so essentially you're just providing some evidence that you've done the activity. It could often be just a photograph or a screen capture or some evidence that the activity has been completed. Now you then share that on Teams to share it with your colleagues and with your tutors. And you also submit that on Learning at Griffith so that it can be then counted towards your grade. Unfortunately, we can't use things from Teams feeding into the assessment system. It has to be done through Learning at Griffith. So that's why we have two submission points for that. One is where you're sharing with your tutors and your um, colleagues and the other is where it's being documented and you receive feedback that it's been you've received some marks for that okay so they don't require additional reflections and other aspects but you may do that so that when you talk about these activities with your tutors of course the activities are designed to assist you with your learning that's the whole point of them uh, the marks are really just there to give you some recognition for doing that effort um, some students need that additional prompt to participate in the activities fully. Okay, so that's the tutorial activities. You've also received marks for completing four quizzes. Now I've tried to make these quizzes as simple as possible for you. Um, they occur where well, you get access to them in weeks four, seven, 10 and 12, essentially every three weeks. Um, and you can retry them as many times as you wish 
the highest mark of any of your tries will count. Um, they're open book. You can use any resources you want. They are timed, but they're multiple choice. They're not that hard, but it does mean you have had to have engaged with the course material, have read and watched the video clips and looked at the resource materials and things of that nature in order to be able to do the quiz. Again, things that we would expect all students to do, but sometimes having an assessment item associated with that can prompt you to being a little bit more diligent in engaging with the learning of the course. So they can be completed at any time. You can leave them till the end. I don't advise that. Um, it's better to do them every three or four weeks so that the material is relatively fresh in your mind. And remember, if you don't do well on it, that's fine. You'll be able to try it again later. And you can keep trying as many times as you want until you get a mark that you're happy with. Now, some of you will want to get 100%. That's a little bit more challenging, but that's up to you. Um, okay, and as I said, uh, the first two of them are worth 9% and the last two are worth 10%, making a total of 38% for the course. So relatively significant, but they're not pass fail. You do get marks for how many of the questions you get correct. So you may not get um, the full 9% for the first quiz. So you may get 7% for that. And that's fine. Okay. Then you've got your portfolio items. So this is made up of a digital technologies lesson plan. We're just doing one lesson plan for this course. And it demonstrates that you can plan a lesson. Um, you can choose from any of the year levels up to year six. We're looking at primary education here. Um, and you can choose any content. It could be um, any of the different uh, content descriptors in terms of learning outcomes. Um, and you can use any lesson plan format that you may have used in other courses. I will provide you with um, some lesson plan templates that you may use if you haven't done lesson plans before, but I'm pretty sure that you've done at least some exploration of lesson planning in your various uh, non-curriculum based courses. You will need to include a cover sheet. You don't need to include a cover sheet for the log of learning activities, quizzes, and um, evidence of tutorial activity contributions. But for your portfolio items, you do need to provide a cover sheet. I have provided you with a link on the course website to generate a cover sheet for you. Um, or you can go and find the cover sheet templates on um, the university website. But you do need to submit a cover sheet with your submissions. And these tasks are assessed by criteria. So they're assessed on the quality of how you address the various criteria in terms of, in this case, developing your lesson plan. Again, these can be completed at any time. Although for this one, you probably want to leave it more towards at least after halfway through the course. That's when we cover all the theory and then we start looking at um, example activities and how to, different ways of um, different approaches to teaching various activities. So you'll have done all the material you need to address these assessment items for your portfolio around about halfway through the course. Um, but don't try doing it before then, uh, because there'll still be some material that you won't have covered sufficiently. Okay, so Essentially, the task involves you preparing a lesson plan, and this should be an exceptional lesson plan. It shouldn't just be a standard basic lesson plan. This is your opportunity to demonstrate your capacity as a teacher to teach uh, digital technologies, a digital technologies lesson really well. So try and make it a really good lesson plan. This should be the best you can do as a lesson. Um, now, it needs to demonstrate four main things. One is your ability to differentiate. Now, this is to meet the needs of different students in your class. A big problem with lesson planning and with pre-service teachers in general is that you focus on developing generic lessons um, that aren't necessarily tailored for specific students or particularly um, particular groups or individuals. So you do need to frame your lesson plan in a way that addresses particular groups. And you may identify those groups. You may have particular gifted and intelligent students in your class or students with particular disabilities or particular interests. 
or um, career aspirations or parental support. Um, you might have a parent that's a software engineer, another one that's a pilot. How might you differentiate your lessons to suit the needs of different groups of students? Now, I don't expect you to differentiate to every individual student. That would be the ideal, but it's impractical. Um, but you do need to show some attempt at differentiation. Okay, then you need to show that you can organize a sequence of activities, which is essentially what a lesson plan does. Um, you need to demonstrate that you've addressed what the curriculum says you should be teaching about the um, content descriptors that you've chosen. And you need to be able to generally demonstrate that you can plan an effective lesson, uh, that the timing is reasonable, that the activities are reasonable, that you, you'll engage your students. Um, in week th uh, three, looking at pedagogy, I went through a number of different pedagogical approaches in terms of teaching, um, and you can utilize those approaches to help frame your lesson design. Um, but you're free to use any approach to teaching as long as you can show that it will be an effective lesson. Okay, so as I said, you can choose any year level for your lesson, any of the content descriptors, um, and any format for the lesson plan. And you've got up to a thousand words. So don't go beyond that. It does keep it fairly succinct. The criteria, as I mentioned, your ability to differentiate, your ability to sequence, your ability to meet the curriculum needs, and your ability to use an effective pedagogy, a process of teaching and learning. Last aspect is one that you'll probably do progressively again throughout the course. These are where you complete four challenges. Now, to make it easy, I've, these four challenges are drawn from the tutorial activities. So throughout the course of the course, um, you're going to be doing 24 activities and you're going to be showing evidence of those 24 activities, ideally. Now, from that, you choose four of them and these you then develop up into an explanation of how you would teach those activities. Now, the way we do them in tutorials is necessarily very abbreviated. We're just showing you ideas and concepts. For these challenges, you take those ideas and you build them out and you explain how you would teach them. Now, you're not doing them as lesson plans. You don't need to go into that level of detail and depth. You're simply taking the activities and explaining how you would go about using that activity in a lesson. So again, these will be against criteria. Um, so while doing the 24 are just providing evidence that you've done something, for these four, you're going to be assessed against criteria in how you've explained how you can take these activities and do them in more detail. You will again need to have a cover sheet. Um, they can be completed at any time during the course, but I suggest you try to break them up and um, get them done and you'll receive some feedback as you go if you make them a little bit more progressively submitted. Okay, so essentially you're describing how you would teach the activities. You need to demonstrate your understanding of technologies education, the curriculum, and approaches to teaching technologies activities. Now, you can choose them from design and technology or digital technologies or any of the activities that we're going to be exploring. There's no specific format, but you do need to address the criteria. And each of them, you have up to 500 words to describe the activities. So looking at the um, criteria, you need to show that they have a link to the curriculum. Now, in all of the activities, in the tutorial activities that I provide, I give you some suggested links to the curriculum. Now you may though find some additional links. The links I provide are fairly basic, but there may be other curriculum descriptors and cross-curricular links and um, uh, other aspects of the curriculum that are being addressed by your um, activity. And you can describe that. You need to cover the content of those curriculum links. Are you actually 
does your activity actually explore and develop what the students need to learn as described by the curriculum? Your pedagogical approach, how are you going to do this activity? How are you going to make it fun? How are you going to make it interesting? How is it going to be effectively supporting students learning through doing this activity? Some activities can be really fun, but don't actually, students don't actually learn much from it. Some can be quite boring, but the students might learn a lot. Ideally, you'll find activities and make your activities a combination of both. Then you need to incorporate some of the core concepts. Some of the things that we explore in weeks four and in weeks five, um, such as the thinking skills. Well, the thinking skills, you've got a specific criteria for, but some of these core concepts can include the cross-curricular links, the um, digital literacies, development of digital literacies, and the general capabilities, and a whole range of other things that are associated with the curriculum and with what we want students to learn, but aren't necessarily described in the content descriptors. And again, then the final one is the student's development of thinking skills. How are you going to support students higher order thinking through doing this activity? And we'll be exploring those again um, in weeks uh, five and six, looking at the, the range of different thinking skills, computational thinking, design thinking, futures thinking, strategic thinking, um, and how your activity will help students develop in that. So you don't have to worry about framing it as a lesson. You're simply describing an activity. You might say we're going to spend um, 20 minutes on this activity and, and students describe sort of what students are doing. Teachers being teachers and pre-service teachers being pre-service teachers, you tend to describe things in terms of lesson plans. So it's fine if you want to frame it as that, but it doesn't need to go into all the detail of lesson planning. And you're not going to be assessed in terms of your lesson planning processes. You're being assessed in your explanation of the idea of the activity and how it can meet various aspects of technology's education. Okay, so that's the assessment for the course. If you have any questions during the course, you can approach your tutors, but they've been asked if they are uncertain or if, it's, if your question is a bit unclear um, to direct it back to myself. I'm the final source of uh, wisdom on the assessment for the course. So please feel free to ask questions directly to myself, but most of the information should be readily available during the tutorials and during the course material or revise this um, little video clip. But if you're unsure, you're certainly welcome to clarify anything. That's it for now.